Joffrey's quest. What is the purpose of life? What is the truth? What is philosophy? Is there a God? How should we live? What comes after death? Let's join Jaffrey in his quest. Episode 1 Plato's The Republic Plato was born around 427 BC in the Greek city of Athens. The Republic is his most renowned work, which has his mentor, the great Socrates, as the main character who explains the attributes of a just city and a just soul. A noble lie. According to Socrates, the children should be told a noble lie that there are three groups in a city. A gold class, which has the qualities to be the guardians or the rulers. A guardian is compared to a shepherd dog, which is kind towards the sheep but fierce against the wolves. A silver class. The silver class, which are the auxiliaries, they support the guardians and protect the city. Finally, the bronze class, which comprises the traders and craftsmen who form the largest section of the city. A city comes to an end when its bronze class becomes its guardians. This Socrates explains with an example of the guardian dog who starts behaving like a wolf. The virtues in an ideal state. Socrates explains virtues of an ideal city and then narrows the search down to an individual soul. Wisdom. Wisdom is the first virtue. A city can be called wise, not because of its commerce or military skills, but only by the knowledge relating to governance and the best interests of the citizens. This knowledge is possessed by the guardians. In an individual, reasoning represents this element. Courage. A city will be called courageous only by the valor of its army and not ordinary citizens. In a soul, this is represented by the spirited element. Temperance. Temperance is the harmony or mutual consensus between guardians and the other segments that the desires of the masses shall be controlled by the wisdom of the guardians. In a soul, the temperance lets the reason be the master of both the spirit and the appetite, where spirit is an ally of the reason and allows it to hold sway over the appetitive elements. Justice the fourth virtue. When the three virtues are determined, the fourth one is the justice. The justice is everyone doing what they are best suited for. The justice is the power which is in itself not either of the other three virtues, but enables their existence. This is true for both a just city and a just soul. The idea of the good. The knowledge of the idea of the good is the highest knowledge and is the cause of all other virtues. This is explained through the example of the sun. The sun enables the sight to view an object, and in absence of daylight, the vision is dimmed and distorted. Similarly, a soul, when it sees the things under the light of truth, then it understands what it sees, but when it focuses under the darkness, then it forms opinions which sway here and there. The interesting thing is that the sight is like the sun, and yet is not sun. Similarly, knowledge and truth are like the good, but are not the good. The sun is the author of sight and growth. 
Similarly, the good is not only the author of knowledge and truth, but also surpasses them in their beauty and essence. There are two forms of things. The visible part comprises of shadows and reflections. And the intelligible or understood part, which has the actual objects whose reflections are in the visible part. The intellectual part can be further divided into two parts. In the lower part, the soul uses assumptions to descend further down the world of shadows. In the upper part, the soul moves upwards, beyond assumptions to the origin, using ideas of forms. The concept is further explained by the analogy of the cave. There are three prisoners who have been chained in an underground cave facing the wall. They cannot move or look backwards. A fire is lit behind them and shadows of various objects are casted on the wall in front of them. This way they are made to believe that the shadows are the real objects. Now, one of the prisoners is made to face backwards and would find it difficult to face the glare of the light. He is dragged out of the cave and would only initially try to see the shadows and reflections in water. Only but gradually he will get accustomed to and see the moon and the stars and realizes what he saw in the cave were only shadows. Finally, when he sees the sun in its full splendor, he realizes that it was the sun that was cause of all things that his sight could see. Now he would feel pity for his fellow beings and try to reason with them that what they believed to be the truth were mere shadows. But when he goes back into the darkness of the cave, he would find it difficult to see, and his companions would not believe him and rather ridicule him, believing that he had lost his vision and senses. Cave is represented by the sight. The going up is the ascent of the soul into the intelligible segment. In the intelligible world, the idea of the good is achieved through a great effort and last of all. The good is finally envisaged as the author of all things beautiful. There are four faculties of the soul based on clarity in terms of truth, where reason corresponds to the highest section while thought corresponds to second section, belief to third, and perceptions to the last. Five natures of states. There are five types of states and corresponding individual souls. Philosopher King. The society cannot be just unless ruled by a philosopher. Such a state is a just and an ideal state. A philosopher is the lover of knowledge and true nature of beings, a soul that has the reason guiding the spirit and the appetitive elements is called a just soul, and such an individual is the master of himself. A philosopher is a rare breed, since it is difficult to gather love of learning and courage together since people inclined towards learning are generally not inclined towards the laborious tasks. A philosopher has wisdom, courage and temperance combined in his soul. Democracy. Socrates explains how the decline starts in a city and soul. It happens when the guardians start neglecting the duties and their education and start enslaving others, they go into wars in pursuit of wealth and honor. This state is dominated by the spirited element. 
a soul in which a spirit starts dominating the reason will correspond to such a city. This city will transform into an oligarchy. Oligarchy. In an oligarchy, the wealth is valued over virtues and is the only criterion to be in the power. The city is divided into rich and the poor. This leads to creation of thrones in forms of beggars and criminals, a section in the society which does not contribute anything. A corresponding soul will have its appetitive elements and greed dominate the other faculties. This city breeds a constant conflict between the rich and the poor, and it is the insatiable longing for wealth that brings the city down. Democracy. The poor are victorious as they overthrow the oligarchs, and public offices are allocated through lots. People have liberty, but people do not obey those who hold offices, and courts have relaxed attitude. It is the most popular of all forms of government. It has insatiable longing for freedom, which finally brings it down. In a corresponding individual, all the elements will be free. The reason will lose control over the other elements, and finally the democracy will turn into another form, the worst of all, that is, the tyranny. There arises a champion from the labor class who promises to deliver the labor class and to redistribute resources among them. But eventually, the champion himself becomes a tyrant and acts like a wolf and removes anyone who poses a challenge to his power. He is the worst form of soul who is a slave to his desires. He is the antithesis of the philosopher king. This concludes our video. If you found this video interesting, please press the like button and click on the bell icon to subscribe to the channel.